Hello viewers, I am Olunye Andrew Obaka, author, public servant, education rights activist, and philanthropist. Uh, I present the Bookman Show on Anderson Edu TV, which is the media arm of Anderson Books Educational Foundation, a small NGO that I formed to help humanity in my own way. I spread education, I dispense free knowledge. Uh, today, I'm going to read from one of my books, National Values for JSS1. I've published several books, but I'm picking on one of them today. Uh, we're looking at uh, civic education, because it's in one book, Civic Education, Social Studies, Security Education. And for those who don't know, National Values is basically three in one book, Civic Education, Social Studies, and Security Education. Now, uh, we're taking uh, Civic Education, and uh, the best way to start, or the best point to start from, is to look at what is Civic Education. What are the functions or the benefits of civic education? The way we are done with that, we go to values, because values are the core, the heart of uh, civic education. So first of all, civic education is an academic subject that educates us on how societies organize themselves, how laws, regulations are made for the benefit of society in general. So if you want to summarize this, civic education talks about their rights and duties of citizens, as well as the obligations. You have your rights as a citizen, very good. You also have your obligation. That's the summary of it. In case you're a student, you want to summarize in an exam, you don't need to go into more detail. Just said that civic education is an academic subject that teaches us how society organizes itself. How laws, rules, and regulations are made for the benefit of society. That is all. Civic education is very important for many reasons, but I'll just give you a brief uh, run on it. Number one, it includes, it helps us to improve the quality of governance. Very, very important, quality of governance, by teaching us the values of discipline, sacrifice, and patriotism. If you are disciplined, you will not commit offense, you will not burden the law of the land. So when we study civic education, it helps us to become good citizens. Then, number two, it also helps society to organize themselves, pay taxes, sanitation, and all that. Then the next one is that it helps us to distinguish between right and wrong. We tell our children, don't steal, don't this, because these things are wrong. No two words about it. So it helps us become better people, better citizens, and also improve the society and quality of governance. So these are the major points of the benefits of civic education. They can help to tell us, so these are the basic ones. Um, we now go to values. What are values? Uh, values are actually the core of civic education. There can be no values, no civic education without values. So by definition, values are those uh, beliefs, attitudes, that societies consider very important. Values are the beliefs, the attitudes that society consider very important. They guide our behavior. If somebody says, I will not sit still, that means have a good value. So without uh, uh, overfacing it, values are those beliefs, attributes, characteristics that guide, they are like the compass that guide our behavior in a society. Leave a stamp in the exam, you say somebody with good values will not steal. Why people with bad value don't mind stealing? That's just it. So now, what are the types of values? If I there are two categories of values, before we go to the type, categories are two, what bad values, what good values. Things like stealing and all that, corruption, that one is bad value. But the emphasis here is good value. What are good values? What are those values that societies should emphasize on? Number one is uh, peace. Every society must emphasize the value of peace. Peace does not mean the absence of conflict, it means peaceful ways of resolving a problem. So I've got this uh, lessons for both exam and enlightenment. So it will make it brief. Now for the details, you can go to the book itself. Number one, that peace is an important value because it shows, it allows for development. When there's a war, there's no development. Once you say this, are done for either exam or explanation. Then number two, you have morality. It's also related to values. There are some things that you just know they are wrong. Even nobody tells you. Although for children, you need to tell them that look, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, and don't do this. And also, cooperation is very important. We cannot, nobody can do it alone. 
God is not created one person, only one person in this world. There are reasons why God creates people in this world, different languages and all that. So once you have co uh, cooperation, you have peace. And also harmony, also related to peace. Peace, harmony, cooperation. Also, uh, you also have uh, integrity. Integrity is defined as doing the right thing, even when nobody is watching. That's it. You don't do to make you in class. Teachers come, let me start reading. No. You read, you prepare to not because somebody is watching you. That's integrity. Uh, then uh, you also have uh, honesty, which is also related to integrity. When you are honest, that means that you don't cheat. You tell the truth at all times. So there are many truthfulness and all that. So for to summarize, values are those things, those attitudes, features that societies consider very important. And I give an example of good values that you have peace, you have uh, morality, you have uh, cooperation, and uh, you also have uh, integrity. So we are done with uh, values. There are many aspects of it, benefit of values and all that. If you recall, when we are talking about the attributes of values, we talk about honesty, integrity, peace, and all that. So we are continuing with honesty. You know, people say honest and honest. What is honesty? Honesty is the value of being truthful, straightforward, and transparent. You are yes, you are yes, you are no, you are no. You do people in the right way. You don't cheat. So honesty is the value or the quality of being transparent, or being straightforward, and of being uh, truthful. So, um, as a reminder, we are reading from uh, Anderson Books, National Values. It's train one. Civic education, social studies, security education. So when you get it, we are getting to in one book. Uh, thank you for your attention. Now we'll continue attributes of honesty. Uh, they even impute in the definition. We have uh, integrity, truthfulness, transparency, steadfastness, faithfulness, accountability, probity, and fairness. So you can see there are many. Uh, there are eight. So I will just take some of them to explain. Truthfulness, that means that you are what you are, you are yes, you are yes, and you are no, you are no. You don't tell lies. So you are honest, and when you say you are honest and you tell lies, you are not honest. So for the purpose of examination, I just said that truthfulness is the attribute of honesty, that you say what you mean and you mean what you say. Uh, you also have uh, integrity, which is also part of uh, the like honesty too. You don't uh, show honesty because people are watching you. Whatever you do, where people are not there. Nobody is there to say thank you or look at the, that is no eye service, that's integrity. You do things because you want to do it. So truthfulness and uh, integrity. And also probity. That means that you do a thing that is always, uh, nobody will find you wanting. You know, if you are giving money to keep, someone give you 10,000 to keep, when you come back, he gives you the money, he gives you the money back, it's the same 10,000. That's probity. No, you know, cheating, the absence of cheating or dishonesty. So, uh, you also have accountability. That means be able to account for. Accountability comes from account for. You're able to account for yourself. If our leaders are honest, they will be accountable. So, integrity, truthfulness, probity, accountability, they are elements of uh, honesty. And uh, we also have uh, fairness and faithfulness. Of course, we know what fairness is. You don't treat somebody, you don't treat somebody badly or two person well because of who he is. You are fair to everybody. So fairness is also related to justice. Because in the exam they can try to confuse students, you know, define justice. We're talking about fairness. If you can define fairness, you can also define justice. So that whatever way, whatever shape or name, our exam questions come, you're able to understand. So you must be fair, you must be you must have integrity, and you must also have uh, faithfulness, be faithful, you know. That is you don't the same thing that with honesty, you don't cheat. That's where you are faithful. So you have to run down, run it down, because you may there are many strategies in reading for exam when you are school. You can first of all memorize the list. So that even in the exam, when you want to see honesty, okay, this is honesty. The next one is what? Probity. Okay, this is probity. So I may not need to uh, take everything word for word or letter for letter. I will just list them again. Integrity, truthfulness, transparency, which is openness, uh, steadfastness, faithfulness, accountability, 
probity and the fairness. So I believe that when you listen to uh, right what I've said now, it helps you in your revision. And when you come to the book itself, you see it uh, in detail. Because what we do here is has time limit. We don't go through all the book like that in details. So we're looking at the uh, benefits of honesty. We have seen that honesty is a good thing. It pays. Honesty is a good thing. It pays because if you lose by being honest, it is true. But in the end, it pays to be honest. So what are the benefits? If there's honesty everywhere, you don't need to even lock your car. You don't know you're going to drop your phone, they'll come back and see it. So you say to have uh, honesty, you say to progress. So without wasting more time, let me look at the benefits. Okay, I said it here. They have uh, self-confidence, they have uh, progress and development, blessings and favor, popularity, recognition and commendation, self-confidence, progress and development, popularity and recognition. Now reward. Uh, I want to, first of all, let me list it again. Self-confidence, progress, blessing and reward, popularity, recognition and commendation. I believe that the producer will be showing it as I'm talking so I can copy it if you wish. Now, I want to illustrate something. If you look at this picture, uh, fortunately, some people die in motor accident. So, the uh, FRS, that is Federal Road Safety Commission staff, they made some money on the body of the dead the accident victims. They didn't take the money. They called the family of the victims and gave them the money back. So, here is it. That was the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate you people. Uh, please, in case you need to know more, uh, you can visit me on my social media handle, Anderson Edu TV. And my phone number is there as well. So let us uh, make it an interactive uh, session. Feel free to call in or send messages. Criticize me anything you saw about the book. I will not be annoyed. Don't worry. I take it as part of correction and improve on my subsequent edition. Thank you very much.